In this video, we are going to share with you how to plan a perfect road trip from Las Vegas to Eastern California. You can visit many national parks with breathtaking beauty in a short span of time if you plan properly. You can visit different places with unique topography and flavor. So without further delay, let's start the video. Our trip started with our flight from Atlanta to Las Vegas. We'll share our day-to-day -day itinerary of this trip, which will help you to plan your trip covering most numbers of places within seven days. We spent our first night in Rio Hotel and Casino at Las Vegas. It's a beautiful hotel which is very close to the Strip and you can get a room with really nice view of the Strip. Our first location to visit was Giant National Park, which is only two and a half hours drive from Las Vegas. The road to the park was breathtaking. Zion National Park is renowned for its amazing red rock landscape, towering sandstone cliffs, narrow slot canyons, and diverse plant and animal life. We planned not to hike any trail with our toddlers on. Visitors have to use park shuttle system during peak season as the roads are inaccessible for private vehicles. Our shuttle dropped us at Jan Lodge. The view from this lodge is beautiful. You can plan night stay here which will cost around $250 to $300 per night. Next, we visited Temple of Sinalva, which is the last stop of the shuttle. There is a river sidewalk which will take you to the Narrow. The Narrows is the most difficult and most beautiful hike of the Giant National Park. It takes around 8 hours for a round trip to the Narrows. The shuttle runs for a specific time period and if you somehow miss the last trip, you have to walk all the way back to the visitor center. To explore the real beauty of Cheyenne National Park, you have to prepare yourself to hike. Otherwise, you can plan a trip like us without hiking. As it started to become dark, we headed back to Las Vegas. Our plan was to stay at Las Vegas that night and then start for our next destination in the morning. Our next destination was Death Valley National Park, which was almost two hours drive from Las Vegas. We enjoyed the scenic drive from Las Vegas to Death Valley a lot. Death Valley is the largest national parks of USA excluding Alaska and Hawaii. This is known as the hottest, driest, and lowest of all the national parks in the United States. There was a lot to see at this 3.4 million acre des desert valley. But as we were just spending half a day here, we planned to visit only the sand dunes. Our first stop was a sand dune development area. Sand dunes are one of the major attractions of Dead Valley National Park. The sand dunes of Death Valley National Park are excellent places for nature study and recreation. If you want to watch the full video of our Death Valley trip, check the link above. 
you can enjoy sandboarding, sand diving, or camping on the dunes. Less than 1% of the desert in Death Valley is actually covered by sand, but there are five unique sand dunes located inside the park grounds. Our next stop was Mesquit Flat Sand Dunes, which is another renowned attraction of Death Valley National Park. These dunes are named for the Mesquite tree which grows in abundance in the area. The sand is soft and deep and will give you a workout, especially if you want to climb some of the bigger dunes. If you are planning a day trip, long weekend or major vacation to Death Valley, I encourage you to make time to stop at the Mesquite flat sand dunes. Spending a wonderful day at Death Valley National Park, we drove around two hours to reach Bishop, where we booked the hotel for the night stay. Next morning, we started for Lake Mammoth from Bishop. This 45 minutes drive from Bishop to Mammoth Lakes is breathtaking as it offers spectacular views of the surrounding mountains. our first stop at Twin Lakes Vista Point. The Twin Lakes Vista is one of the most spectacular roadside viewpoints in the area. From the Vista Point, you can see Twin Lakes backdropped against the Mammoth Crest. Then we headed toward the ski resort. We parked our car and used the shuttle, which is a better option as the road starts to become slippery due to snow. Mammoth Mountain is very famous for this ski resort during winter. We used the gondola to go at the top of the mountains. This was an awesome ride with a panoramic view of the whole ski resort. We spent some time at the ski area. There were nice arrangements for food as well. They have stalls for different cuisines, you can just grab whatever you like and pay at the front. We finished our Lake Mammoth trip with a visit to Mono Lake. It is one of the oldest lakes in North America. Limestone towers are called Tufa Towers. Due to high alkalinity of the lake water, the water precipitates carbonate minerals such as calcite. High concentrations of dissolved calcium ions in these subsurface waters cause huge amounts of calcite to precipitate around the spring orifices. If you want to see more of Lake Mammoth, please check our full video of Lake Mammoth on the link above. From Mammoth Lakes, we started toward Nevada part of Lake Tahoe, which was almost two hours drive. 
We are staying in Bailey's Casino and Resort located in Sunlight Town. This town has several casinos, resorts and recreational activities. This was a nice resort and I would say we got a nice room at a reasonable cost. Next morning we started to explore Lake Tahoe, which is a very renowned tourist destination attracting millions of visitors each year. First stop was Emerald Bay, which is one of the most scenic and popular destinations of Lake Tahoe, known for its stunning natural beauty and historical significance. Emerald Bay Overlook provides breathtaking panoramic views of Emerald Bay, Fenete Island, and the surrounding Sierra Nevada mountains. It's an ideal spot for capturing the stunning beauty of Lake Tahoe. to Tahoe City, where you can enjoy lakefront dining at various restaurants and cafes, offering a chance to savor local cuisine with stunning views of Lake Tahoe. is a charming community located on the northern shore of Lake Tahoe. Then we stopped at Sand Harbor. This area is known for its unique rock mount formations including large boulders and submerged rocks, adding to the scenic beauty of the shoreline. The sunset at Lake Tahoe is a breathtaking and splendid sight. The surrounding mountains add to the scenic beauty, creating a pleasing backdrop for the sunset. As it started to become dark, we headed towards our next destination, Yosemite National Park. We stayed in a hotel located at Oakhurst near Yosemite Park area. The hotel was located really close to the park. We planned to explore the park without hiking as it would not be convenient with our toddler son. Yosemite National Park is a stunning national park located in the western Sierra Nevada of Central California. It covers an area of about 1187 square miles. It is renowned for its breathtaking landscapes including towering granite cliffs, waterfalls, giant sequoia trees and diverse ecosystems. Our first stop was Tunnel View, which is one of the most iconic and breathtaking viewpoints in Yosemite National Park. The viewpoint is easily accessible by car and is a must visit spot for photographers and nature enthusiasts. It offers a stunning panoramic vista of some of the park's most famous landmarks including El Capitan, Half Dome, Bridal Will Fall, Cathedral Rocks and Spires. Yosemite is home to several impressive waterfalls, including Yosemite Falls, which is one of the tallest waterfalls in North America and Bridal Veil Fall. The waterfalls are especially spectacular in the spring when snowmelt increases their flow. Then we drove toward Yosemite Village, which is home to the Yosemite Valley Visitor Center. 
where visitors can obtain information about the park, its natural features, trails and ranger-led programs. Yosemite Village Laws has dining options including cafeterias and restaurants, where visitors can grab a meal or snack. There are several lodging options in Yosemite which include the Ahani Hotel and Curry Village. Curry Village is a popular lodging and camping area located in Yosemite National Park. Curry Village offers a range of accommodations including rustic cabins with shared facilities, canvas tent cabins with wooden frames and canvas walls, and standard hotel rooms. Curry Village is situated in Yosemite Valley, close to iconic landmarks such as Half Dome, Glacier Point, and Yosemite Falls. Its central location makes it convenient for visitors to explore the park's main attractions. stopped by here as you can see one of the most prominent and recognizable features of the park's landscape, Three Brothers from here. The Three Brothers are a trio of distinctive granite peaks located in Yosemite Valley. Next morning we visited Mariposa Grove which is one of the most visited and well-known sequoia groves in the park and is home to over 500 mature giant sequoias, including some of the largest trees on earth. Yosemite National Park operates a shuttle service to Mariposa Grove during the peak visitor season, which is generally from spring to fall. These giant sequoias contribute to the unique and awe-inspiring landscape of Mariposa Grove, attracting visitors from around the world who come to appreciate the grandeur of these ancient trees. After our short trip to Mariposa Grove, we started to drove back to Las Vegas. It was about seven and a half hours drive from Yosemite to Las Vegas. We stayed at Rio Hotel again that night. Next afternoon, we decided to have a nice walk on the Las Vegas Strip as our flight to Atlanta was at night. It was time to end our seven day long trip. We had a blast and enjoyed experiencing breathtaking beauty of nature. Hope this video will help you to plan a perfect vacation and to explore so many amazing places in a short span of time. Thank you for watching our video. Please do subscribe to our channel if you like our videos.